There's a chicken or the egg challenge when it comes to setting up user accounts in that it's the first thing you need to do in order to start using the system. But since you probably don't have an in-depth knowledge of the available functionality yet, you might not know what features to configure for each user. So this tutorial outlines the basics of setting up user accounts, and later, as you learn more about the different areas of the system in more detail, you can come back and adjust the user profiles as you go. A user's access in the system is determined by two things, the settings in the user master file and their user definable menus. New users have to first be set up in the user master file before you can create a menu structure for them. In general, the settings in the user master file itself are cross-functional, as opposed to the menus which control access to specific functions. For example, in the settings folder of the user master file, you can set up defaults for many fields, such as the user's default cost center or ship to location. These settings will cause fields to default in various areas of the system, such as when creating purchase orders and new requisitions, but it's the user's menu layouts that control whether or not the user has access to these transactions in the first place. The user master file contains login IDs, contact information, and various settings that will control cross-functional features and capabilities for each user. As with many other master files, most of the fields are optional and will only be needed if you implement certain modules. At a minimum, you need to enter the user's ID code and name. You'll be prompted for their initial password when you click Save, and the user will be prompted to change their password the first time they log into the system. If you have lots of users to set up, it might be easier for you to import the user master file using this option. Also, you can copy user accounts by clicking Add and then entering an existing user ID code. While you can copy other master files like this as well, the ability to copy existing codes is especially beneficial in the case of the user master file, because unlike other master files like suppliers and items and account codes, it's quite common to have groups of users with essentially the same user profile, other than their name and ID of course. Okay, whether you're setting up users from scratch or copying the settings from another user, you need to understand the basic settings and options. Again, don't worry about the other settings for now. If you need them, you'll be pointed back here when implementing the other modules in the system. In the first tab, other than the user's ID code and name, you might want to fill in the user's email address. The email address is optional, but recommended since SpendMap can send automatic email notifications to keep people up to date on events in the system, like when a manager needs to approve something or when someone's order is rejected. You can enable the individual messages over here. The other address fields are optional, so let's move on to the settings folder where you can see various options and default settings for various fields that will carry forward to purchase orders, requisitions, and other documents. Again, most of these fields are optional and many only apply to certain modules, but there are three settings in particular that you should probably enable for most users. First, enable the user task list with this option. This will provide a hyperlink in the main menu like this if the user has pending transactions that they need to work on, such as incomplete purchase orders or maybe items that need their approval. Next, enter the user's default number set. If you only have one sequence of numbers for POs and other documents, this will be number set A. However, if you set the system up with more than one sequence of document numbers, you'll already know what I'm talking about and you'll know what to put in this field. Finally, fill in the user's default cost center. While it's also an optional field, it's very common to default the user's cost center when they enter new POs, requisitions, or other documents. If the user enters transactions for a variety of cost centers, or if you're using this user-definable field for other purposes, you can leave it blank or you can enter a default cost center and the user can change it on an order-by-order -order basis. Again, the balance of the fields in this folder are module-specific, so we won't cover them in this introductory tutorial. Just like the settings folder, most of the settings in the Permissions tab are module-specific or only apply to certain types of users, like system administrators. The two settings that I think you might want to consider for most users are the ability to add master file codes on the fly and the ability to enter one-off items. For more details on these options, you can read the online help and there's also another video tutorial on master files that you might want to take a look at. So those are the half dozen or so basic settings that I think you should know about when you first start setting up users. If you have specific questions about one of the other folders or one of the other fields, the online help will have all the answers for you. Aside from the various settings in the user master file, you can restrict what users can do in the system by removing menu options and pop-up prompts from their user-definable menus. So each user or group of users can have a customized menu layout with all or just some of the available menus in the system. 
This is especially true of casual users like requisitioners who might only have access to a handful of utilities in the system, like the ability to enter a requisition and maybe check the status of their orders. Just like with the user accounts themselves, once you create a menu structure for a user, you can copy their menus to other users with the same access rights. If you're creating menus from scratch for the user, it'll be a two-step process. First, you'll use this option to build a menu for the modules you want them to have, and then you can optionally use this option if you want to add or remove individual menus or prompts within the selected modules. As I showed you in the first two sections of this tutorial, you can copy user accounts and user menus from user to user to save time. But if you're setting up a larger group of users, you might want to take advantage of SpinMap's user group feature to update the user master file settings and the user menus for the entire group in one step. You can do this using this field to reference the master users whose rights you'd like to copy. Once you fill in this field for each user in the group, you can then use this menu option to mass update everyone's settings and access. As you can see, you'll be able to mass update just their menus, or you can also select to update the various folders in the user master file as well. And where would a user access and security tutorial be without some mention of passwords? You can maintain passwords within the application itself, or you can integrate with Active Directory so that you don't have to maintain passwords at all in SpendMap. Various options are available in this menu group to either configure Active Directory integration or set up options for your internally maintained passwords, such as minimum password length, whether passwords are case sensitive, how frequently passwords should expire, and so on.